Alrighty, hey guys. So this video is your first um, into the reproductive system. Um, and so there's going to be four of them that we've dropped throughout the next two weeks. Um, and the first one is a little bit about the descent of the testes. So the testes originate as an indifferent gonad on the posterior abdominal wall. And this whole thing basically happens in the seventh to 12th week. So because they're in the abdominal wall, um, they have to get down somehow to basically the scrotum where they're going to end up. Um, and so this whole video is basically just talking about how they're getting down there and what's actually happening or changing around them as it goes down. Um, but before we actually get down into their descent, we have to talk about two really important embryological structures. Um, so the first one is the gubernaculum. And the second one is this thing called the processus vaginalis. Um, okay, so if we start with the gubernaculum, the gubernaculum is basically just a fibrous tissue that's going to help in the descent. So essentially, it starts off a bit long and then it starts to shorten and shorten. Um, and this shortening will pull down the testes from that posterior abdominal wall all the way into the screw. Um, and the gubernaculum, because it's an embryological structure, it's basically just going to leave behind a remnant. And this remnant is what we call the scrotal ligament. So it's what the gubernaculum becomes. And the scrotal, scrotal ligament is what's going to anchor the testes within the scrotum. So if your gubernaculum is defective, we can get things like testicular torsion, which is a medical emergency, as it can basically just cut off that blood supply to the testes. So this is super painful. It can actually cause infertility. Or you can also get with defective gubernaculum, gubernaculums, you can also get cryptorchidism. Um, um, and that's basically when the testes haven't descended properly. And so they're going to be just located somewhere along that path. And it's usually along the inguinal canal because that's the path that the testes take to get into that scrotum. Um, and though this can usually be surgically corrected, it's quite significant because um, those with it are at a greater risk of malignancy later in life. Um, so if we move on to the process of vaginalis, I remember I found this super confusing for the longest time, but it's literally just a weird outpatching of parietal peritoneum that descends down with the testes itself. So it's an embryological structure. Um, and so um, it's going to basically be obliterated in females, but in males, it leaves behind a remnant and we call that remnant the tunica vaginalis. Um, and so the process of vaginalis basically allows for the previously intra-abdominal testes to basically just exit from that abdominal cavity. Um, and the testes will descend posterior to the, pro um, the process of vaginalis, and that's quite important. Um, so if we have a look just at the diagram on the right here, we can actually identify a couple of the things that we were just talking about before. So this cylinder that we can see, that cylinder is what we call the inguinal canal. So that's our inguinal canal. Um, in one over here, you can see that the one in one I might just change color. It's basically this blue thing. You can see that it's this weird cord like structure. And you can see that throughout the times it's actually getting shorter and shorter. So this is our gubernaculum. And as it's shortening, it's basically pulling down those testes all the way from where it started into the scrotum over here. Um, and so this pink thing over there is our testes, basically. Um, all right. Okay. So as we've discussed, the testes basically start off as retroperitoneal structures. They start off at the posterior abdominal wall. Um, even though they start off on the posterior abdo wall, they're actually also attached to the anterolateral abdo wall um, by that gubernaculum as well. Uh, which is basically, as we talked about, it's going to be pulling down these testes through into the pelvis and ultimately into the scrotum via that inguinal canal. So as the testes actually pull, get pulled down through that canal, it's going to be preceded by the processus vaginalis. Uh, but as they actually descend, they start to grab muscle and fascial layers that they pass through or that they basically pass by. Uh, so what happens is as they begin their descent, they grab these layers and they pull them down so that they actually go into the canal and the spermatic cord as well. So these are all the layers that you can see in this image over here. One thing to note is that the transverse abdominis muscle, which is in the red, so I'll just highlight it over here, this thing over here, you can see that it doesn't actually, there's like a little gap there. And it doesn't basically, it doesn't, it's not, um, it doesn't go through. And so this is 
indicative because um, it doesn't actually go down with the rest of the testes or with the rest of the legs. Um, it doesn't actually extend far enough or high enough for it to be pulled down with the testes. So as you can see, all the other layers get pulled down. They all have their little bits that are pulled down with it, but this transversus abdominis just stays there. It doesn't have any, um, any kind of, um, just like any kind of layer or any kind of lengthening down into the scrotum. Um, so as these layers are actually pulled down, most of them will adopt different names. And so that's really important to know. So for example, if we start with, if we, for example, if we just take this orange layer, this orange layer is the external abdominal oblique muscle. And if we follow it, so that's basically in the pelvis. And if we follow it down into the scrotum, so we look for the orange layer over here, we can see that it's been renamed to the external spermatic fascia. Um, and so that's really important because um, you just need to memorize basically what they become. Because otherwise you're going to have like 20 different names and you're not going to know oh, what's what. Um, so it's really important just to memorize what everything has become and everything. Um, so you can see here that this is the tunica vaginalis. That's basically your processes vaginalis. And that's the remnants of your processes vaginalis in your males. Um, this is just another diagram just showing you everything, but it just shows you the processes vaginalis in more detail. It just shows you what exactly it is. So you can see that this is weird red structure that's actually following the testes down um, with it. And it's basically going to become your tunica vaginalis, as we just saw, with your two layers, your parietal and your peritoneal layer, um, your parietal and your visceral layer. One thing that we're going to be talking about next is this thing called the spermatic cord. Um, so through the descent, the testes actually remain in contact with the abdominal, with the abdomen via the spermatic cord. So if we just go through, so this is just the layers, this is just a table showing you the layers. It's really important to basically remember everything and go down to the spermatic cord. So the spermatic cord will contain structures which run to and from the testes, and it basically suspends the testes in the scrotum. So the cord begins um, in the deep inguinal ring, and it goes all the way up into the superficial inguinal ring. So the deep would be somewhere around here. There's the spermatic cord there, and the super superficial is over there. Um, and it's going to connect to the testes at the posterior medial border. So over here will be the posterior medial border, and that's where it's connecting. But the main thing that you need to know about the spermatic cord is that there are the contents. You need to basically memorize the contents. So there are three things. Um, oh, there are basically there's three of everything, and that's how I like to remember it. So there's three arteries, there are three nerves, there are three fascial layers, and there are three other things. The arteries are the testicular, deferential, and cremasteric arteries. Nerves are your genitofemoral, your chromosteric, and your sympathetic nerve fibers. Your fascial layers are your external and internal spermatic fascia and your chromosteric fascia. And the three other things are your vas deferens, also known as your doctor's deferens, your pampiniform plexus, and your lymphatic vessels as well. So as you can see in this diagram over here, you can actually kind of see where these things are in like a cross section of the spermatic cord and you can start to identify, oh, this is where everything is. Um, rest assured, you don't actually need to know. They're never going to be like, oh, what's this one particular thing or what's this one particular thing? You don't need to know that. You just need to know that, okay, um, these are the things that are present in the spermatic cord. Um, and with that, that's pretty much everything to do with the descent of the testes and just the spermatic cord as well. If you've got any questions, feel free to shoot us an email, have check out our slides, and hopefully that will help a little bit. Um, I know that Lads also has like a banging video on this, so hopefully um, with all of that, that will make this topic a little less confusing for you guys.